Back to the scene of total humiliation for overhaul. That Tell little again, little kick that says it all. Next leader is gonna be. I hate you. Not overhaul. <laughs> Someone so obsessed with erasing quirks shouldn't have one of their own. Don't he took away his arm. <gasps> Arms. What I was expecting the first time I saw this was for him to use the bullet. That would be a more permanent solution, right? Because right now he's like a, a surgeon without his hand, so he's not going to be able to do things well, but he's not quirkless, is he? I mean, this is the world of My Hero Academia. He could find other ways to use his quirk. So it's possible this is not the end of Overhaul, especially with uh, Shigaraki being this cocky. But it is a glorious scene, though. Like, it's just so much fun to see Shigaraki have this complete, utter, devastating domination over Overhaul, someone who was gloating it over him for the whole, whole arc. I know the feeling of dominating over one's enemies. It's especially sweet when you yourself don't even know if, if it's possible, right? Like you're motivated primarily by <laughs> strong hatred, probably, or strong conviction in what you're doing or, or whatever it is. But there's always a chance that you will be the one to lose. And so you're like teetering over a cliff for the entirety of the conflict. And so the end of the conflict in your favor is such a sweet victory. It's such a sweet relief. There are a few things as sweet and as seductive. And that's a big part of what makes it dangerous. It can set you up for a huge fall because I feel like most people are walking this sort of tightrope between doing the things they feel are right because of personal values and what feels like the right thing to do and doing things because we don't really feel like we have any other choice and so being able to win in this way being able to get whatever you want perhaps means opening the floodgates in certain key areas where you're no longer afraid of repercussions if you can just dominate everything then what's the point of values right so what ends up happening if you end up being able to like have power and get the outcomes you want is anything that's not a deeply rooted value anything that was just sort of there as a placeholder to perform in ways that keep you safe and not get repercussions for your actions go out the window because they were never really part of any kind of deep conviction in the first place and so that's a great way to like foster the worst qualities in yourself and also to develop arrogance and also to set you up for an inevitable crash because you can't always win and if you've compromised yourself in that way if you've traded things you once thought were wrong or have given up on the pursuit of like deep personal values and doing what you feel is right what do you have left when you're losing i mean that's overhaul right now right like that's overhaul's deep tragedy is that not only did he suffer this humiliating defeat he suffered this humiliating defeat after doing all these terrible things to people he cared about so what does he have he has literally nothing except his quirk which is still in there you're doomed to watch from the sidelines as your dream falls apart that's also what Let's makes this charismatic, you know, because I think on some level we all get the appeal of, like, being able to carry out plans and to win, to dominate, to do what we want. I mean, it's undoubtedly a great feeling and seductive. The feeling of control and, like, capability. It's powerful. Sucks to be you, overall. Oh, look at this! Hey, I like it already. Very colorful. I'm getting these slice, slice of life vibes. And that's what I like. We, we've had a rough time. We deserve it. <laughs> a lot has happened. I'm seeing these characters. Ayoyama, I like forgot he existed because I haven't seen him in eight years. Time for some cafe studying. I'm, I'm there. Let's do it. Is that how you study? Just blank, blank page. Dramatic Todoroki shot. <laughs> Dramatic Bakugo shot. It's like a real loneliness in that shot. What is this, lo this Bakugo loneliness opening? Yeah. I'm glad to see Mirio smiling. Endeavor seems to be about to make a big comeback. Are they in jail? Are they doing a rock concert? Is this the rock concert arc? Saving the world through music. Band arc! Let's do this. So that was a very interesting opening. It's unlike just about any opening I can remember from the show so far. It's it's more reminiscent of like doo 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 of ages past. Remember doo doo doo? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> it doesn't have that epic feel that a lot of openings go for, I think, but that's fine. I think it has a lot of other moments of poignancy that I'm sure will get more poignant as I understand what they represent. Specifically, some very interesting and telling shots of Bakugo, who, I don't know, the vibe I'm getting from it is just extreme loneliness. And maybe contemplation, I don't know. And then Todoroki being, you know, just cool and also maybe dealing with his father and then it's just good to see them smiling again that might sound stupid to say but it's been a rough season so far so you've had eyewitness reports eh? hard to believe he's this deep in the mountains there's not all that much out here grant you doing some good detective work Eerie? in the last couple of days four people have reported spotting him given how remote the area is i'd say the odds are good it's a trap four separate reports does sound careless it's a trap <laughs> it's a trap what's the league of villains up to Traps. Uh, return to the fire. <laughs> oh no. I don't know. Yeah, I'm on it. Just sending him in. There's a rogue agent. Old snake. You're not going anywhere. I just happen to be going for you know a walk in the woods. It's a trap. Grand Torino. 
Your quirk makes you a pain well, this for Western, those of us Western trying theme, to stop the lead. Western riff. It'll be easier with you gone. Have you or the officers heard whispers of a man with a wild appearance traversing this area? A, a new, a new villain? Should you ever be concerned or feel as though you need assistance, there is someone else you can rely on. A titan. Allow me to he introduce is a titan. you to one of his most faithful servants, Giganto Machia. But why do they call him Giganto? The glory of my master. You go switch now. <laughs> the Radio Titan. Does Gran Torino even deserve to breathe? My first thought when they tackled Kogiri and we're going to take him in is that it could be one of those plot devices that's become really, really popular over the last decade or so where like the villain gets intentionally captured so that he can let people in. Can he warp people into him? Well, maybe not. I mean, Kogiri has a warp quirk, but he can't bring people from remote locations to his location through the warp, right? He can only do the reverse. People that are in front of him can be warped elsewhere. Not sure. If he could do that, if he could bring people in through his warp gate from outside, he would be really, really difficult to contain. Bringing him anywhere would be a threat. And cute birds. Kai Chizuki, the young head of a formerly prominent Yakuza group, was, was humiliated and left on the side of the highway. They were attacked by the League of Villains. During the incident, the sand hero Snatch, who was serving as an escort, was killed. All right, so he was killed. This attack on a villain in custody is an unprecedented failure. So much for hero spin. After all that, this is what the news runs with. Good news is, most everyone's headed back to class. The doctors want to monitor Togeta a little while longer. But Recovery Girl was able to completely heal the rest of the students involved in the raid. I'm not falling for this again. Last time I fell for the everyone's fine routine. Night I died. What's the catch? <laughs> we need to trust that the doctors will help her. She'll be fine. I want to see Togeta before I leave, though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's big. I feel like Eri can be talked to. There's got to be a way, right? I mean, glass through Are glass or there? something. It's me, Midoriya. Hey, I'm a main man. <laughs> Back to work. Wasting no time. Come on, look how much energy I have. <laughs> it's kind of lame, am I right? Way to honor the request he made. His last request. Sir loved to laugh. I know he was super strict with you, but I got to see a different side of him. God, that makes it even more sad that we only really saw Degu's perspective on, on Night Eye. We didn't really, really get that side of him. We didn't get to, because everything we, we saw of him was in the context of his rivalry with All Might, with Deku as a figurehead for that, and then this investigation, which was super tense. It's funny, because even when he was introduced, even though I had sort of weird feelings about him at first, the biggest thing he had going for him was that Mirio seemed to really adore him. And because Mirio is someone that I really like, that immediately gives Night Eye some credit, right? It's like, well, there's probably something to him. And it turns out there is. It's just that our ability to experience that was somewhat cut short. I refuse to sit around crying. Because but I guess it lives on in Mirio, which is beautiful. One day. He's undoubtedly really sad. Plus, if I've got a gloomy face on, it might make little Aerie feel sad. You have the power to become a symbol, but you're mediocre. <laughs> right, this night I... Mirio should have inherited the power. You are amazing. Yeah, no doubt about that. No question. But I couldn't do that. You kept that scared little girl safe all on your own, but I had to have help from her and Mr. Aizawa. If you had been the successor instead of me, then maybe Night Eye would be alive. No, that's the wrong takeaway. If I told you there was some way that I could give you my quirk, then would you? No, oh, I wouldn't wow. want it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I would be causing you a bunch of trouble, wouldn't I? I don't know why you talk like you did something wrong. You did a good Hello, job. Hello, Mirio. Yeah, for sure. You're a hero, Deku. Damn right he is. That's so beautiful and so so great to hear because that's the thing. The obsession with the holder of One for All is understandable, but to me, misses the full picture. Like, and what just happened in the Every Rescue arc, it wasn't any one of them that, like, swooped in to save the day, right? It was literally all of them playing their part. I mean, the, the arc went to great lengths to focus on each individual role, and it's not hard to imagine how if any one of those people fell short, the whole thing fell short. And that's actually a great thing, I think. What Mirio did was unbelievable. What Deku did was also unbelievable. There's room for both of those things. There's room for both of them as heroes. And then just looking at this decision, less from a symbolic lens and more just a practical lens, I feel like the things that Mirio has that Deku doesn't have right now, Deku can can learn because their behaviors, their attitudes. But if Deku were to transfer one for all to Mirio, who already has pretty pretty amazing abilities and quirks, Deku would then lose something that he could not rebuild. So I think the world is, is objectively better with both of them having the things that they have. And it sort of doesn't matter to me which one of them had a more natural disposition for heroism. Because I think, you know, in all this talk about like, what are you born with? And were you born with the ability to do things? Or were you someone who is destined to be great? I think those things do exist. It's just not the things themselves. It's more like the key ingredient is the ability to reflect and grow. If you have a certain baseline amount of insight, a certain amount of awareness that you can 
make effort to make yourself better, then the rest is just a matter of doing that. The only time potential really doesn't exist, I think, is if people just are not aware that they're responsible for their own growth or that growth is even possible. But Deku knows that. I mean, this is My Hero Academia. This is what the whole class is. They're all a group of people who take responsibility for their role in their own lives and the things they have to do. And so while the quirks are sort of out of their hands, right? They're, they're born with the quirks they're born with and Deku was given one for all, the personality stuff, it, it can all be developed. And in fact, that's what we're seeing. For example, that... <laughs> Awkward but awesome smile that Deku gave Eri while he was saving her. He learned that in the licensing exam. And Mira is also like a senpai, right? He's older. So it's a good role. It makes total sense. Everything's where it should be, in my opinion. And besides, yesterday Eraser told me about Eri and how her power works. Yeah, there's still hope for, for Mirio's quirk. I'll try asking her if she can rewind me to when I still had permeation. Yep, there's hope. <laughs> I would have loved to see that conversation with Aizawa. I'm sure it was really touching. I'll probably have to take some time off from classes at UA until my quirk comes back. But don't worry about me. I'm going to be just fine. No doubt. No doubt. I have to believe Sir's prediction will come true. <laughs> so do me a favor. Let's both keep smiling. What a guy, Mirio. So glad he's alive. I'm the hero who will save a million people. Good. I'll be waiting for you. Yeah, when he says it, you feel it. It's, you just believe that he's going to save a million Midoriya. people. Did you get all he's got one under his belt. More than one. Yeah, I'm all good now. Thank you. Izuku Midori. How are you doing, Hiroshima? <laughs> we have some questions for you about the incident. How did you fly, and how did you do that hundred god punch barrage? Meanwhile, the rest of Class A carried on as usual. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> we can't be late getting to the training course. I know. And don't walk They're in They're still front doing of the me. training course? God, that's humiliating. Can you imagine the, the bitter sting of being in the training course and hearing about what Deku's been doing for Bakugo specifically? You know what's weird? It feels like we haven't been back here in a long time. Right? That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Well, too let's long. Go. Feels like coming home. My Hero Academia homecoming. Oh, there you guys are! There you are! <laughs> Leading the charge. It's a double chocolate cake. First nice. Kamino and now the Yakuza. You guys are always getting into such crazy situations. Do you know how much that yeah. scares us? <laughs> a little, little, you know, convenient for the show. But... Okay. I mean, I don't know. How can we be sure? Just watch him. Give him some space. Be good friends. It'll all come out. Nice to see some love from Invisible Girl. I got no nothing bad to say about that. Enough of this! I know everyone was worried, but calm down. Miss Ida's hands. <laughs> you should console them quietly and let them rest their bodies and their minds. Yeah, a little over the top, but <laughs> all right. I mean, it's probably a balance of both. I'm sure they feel relieved having the classmates greet them this like this. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Then, if I may. Do you have any idea how boring it was for all of you? It was awful! At least have a little bit of the cake! Oh, Jocko, you all right? I love it. My heart is filling with warmth. I can't help but think that I could have done more. I... I held Night Eye in my arms. What if I'd been faster? This makes you feel a little bit bad for teasing a rock about not doing that much. The show's like calling direct attention to that now. And to be fair, like, I'm only saying that as a joke and only saying that to compare it to like Deku. Really thinking about it in terms of just the, the world, it's fine to play a small role. There's nothing wrong with that. I understand the desire to really want to have like a super significant impact and to want to be the best and to want to, you know, measure up to people that we admire. And I think those are all great things that should be listened to and developed. But in any given moment, there's always just beauty in doing your part. And she did. We didn't see a lot of it, but she was holding down the outside of the fort wall while the invasion was happening and she managed to like subdue and capture certain villains. So you don't know, like you don't know how big of a role that played. It might have been actually very significant. And even if it wasn't, that was just how it worked out that day at that moment, you know, big picture. It doesn't speak to her total ability or her value as a human being or as a hero. It's just the way it played out. I mean, the fact that she was even there fighting in that treacherous situation and making decisions that helped and not panicking, even if she like fell down once, you know, it's actually amazing. Hey, so I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, getting there anyway. Right, they have a relationship. That's one thing we've learned. Coda's bunny. Do you guys want to hold it for a little while? Ribbit. Dorm life is great. <laughs> oh no. Yo, oh no, I was worried about this. Over here sulking, the loneliness boy. begins. More continues. Hey, you guys. I'm glad you're all back and everyone's safe, but I gotta get to bed. <laughs> Since when am I surrounded by geezers? No, no, they're hurting right now. They're hurting from not being able to do anything. This is everything to them right now. I get it. Kachan yeah, and Todoroki have already started their remedial courses. They must be working hard. I mean, they're so motivated right now. I only heard the highlights about what had gone down. Hey, look at this room, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew a lot had happened to everyone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not going to be easy. I am going to be your hero. 
Even if it's set in stone, I'll smash that future! <laughs> it's like a victory lap with his art. Let you go. Showing how cool it was. Show the thousand god punches. If I can't save Aerie, one small child who's relying on me to help her! Do it. Then how thousand can I god punches! <laughs> yeah! There it is. Everybody! But this time, with sentimental music. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it again. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Even though my body was exhausted, that night, I couldn't actually get myself to sleep. Yeah, there's just no way to do all of it. To process all of it right away. We'll be taking you to training today. Eraser's gonna be playing hooky thanks to all the Yakuza chart toppers who were taken down yesterday. Oh, is he injured worse than we thought? Nah, apparently they needed his power to help with the girl they rescued. Right, right. I feel like he's gonna be very, very connected to Eri and her recovery. We tried our best, but he's gone into hiding. Honestly, You're pretty messed up. arresting Kuragiri and letting that monstrosity go, it's hard to say if we made the right choice. You should have seen him, Toshinori. Oh, okay. So it's not just that he is big, he's got powers. So All Might's going to be joining us today. That There's might not be the best idea. More to this visit than just, like, escorting them. All Might doesn't, you know, do anything casually or accidentally. Uh, I knew Endeavor was going to show up. I had a feeling. Isn't the former number but, like Endeavor staircase scenes. They're always meeting on Thanks staircases. Thanks for babysitting Shoto. You're so useful. Endeavor. The number one hero who looks thrilled with his new life. He's just sunshine and rainbows now. Oh, I'm going to go find some coffee. Deuces. This guy does not need coffee. <laughs> hey! Oh, look who it is. <laughs> I just can't help but hate both you and Right, your dad. right. Well, they've they've been through stuff now. Water under the bridge. You're like super And this is the hot. the actual I'm crazy psych to train What's your name? Cammy? Babe like you. Camelia? Cammy. Cammy. Hey, you are she. Do you know him or something? We've never seen her before. Can I like have it turns your number? Uh, sure. Cuz it was uh what's her name? Toga. It's about time we got started. Yes. It's like gang orca. Shall we make today's training a little bit more interesting? All right, I'm here for this. Wait, wait, is that it? Is that it? It is it. All right, new ending. Who are these kids? Is this gonna be new characters or is it backstory? That looks like uh, Mirio as a kid. Ooh, tense room reflection. From everyone. Ooh, look at Mirio, he's like sweating. Is that Toga? Are these like growing up pictures of the characters, including the villains? Yeah, yeah, these are like baby pictures. This is the, uh, what do you call it? The Red Swan of My Hero Academia. <laughs> What's the truth? We're all kids, everyone's just a child inside. We all gotta start somewhere. We're all just the same, same entity, just on a spectrum of age. What was Toga like as a kid, I wonder? So a new arc has begun with, overall what I think was a really great episode. It sort of had it all. It gave me that warm and fuzzy feeling of coming home and being with classmates that I realized at the end of the last arc that I, I missed. Like I said before, I think the first half of season four used the fewest of the, the characters that we've known in favor of maybe some newer characters. So it does feel really good to see them again. You know, that's always been one of the show's greatest points is that the characters as individuals but more importantly in this case as an ensemble feel real and feel like people you know and feels like a group that you belong to <laughs> you know what I mean so going back to the dorms is just a nice feeling and then I think an amazing and touching scene in true MHA form of like the Deku and Mirio conversation where once again they deliver on the inspiration and once again it centers around what I would say is a choice to aim at sort of the highest thing that they can see you know it's like it would be totally understandable if Mirio were to just be devastated and be down in the dumps and I'm sure he is right I'm sure he is really sad and I'm sure he's grieving and I'm sure that privately he has moments and in fact I think we just saw that in the ending credits yet he's focusing on what he wants to do in this situation what he can do in this situation and that's to one honor the request of Night Eye and live up to Night Eye's better qualities and to be a, you know, a good pupil in that way. To keep focused on his vision that despite this seemingly massive setback he's experienced, 
Nothing has changed for him about who he is and what he wants to be. Finding things that give him hope towards an outcome that is satisfying, that will keep him going, that will allow him to smile. Not being bitter, not being jealous, allowing for Deku to have been great in that situation, allowing for other people to have been great in that situation, not being competitive. You know, there's so many pitfalls that I feel so many people would fall into that he so, so expertly avoids. And in doing so, not only continues to be a great person for himself, but also an inspiration for others like Deku, who is not the kind of person to forget that kind of thing. And on top of that, the introduction of a new villain, a new threat, and an attack on Titan crossover which is fun. Edith's hands were there. Everybody was there. It was great. So yeah, a promising start to the second half of season four. I'll see you guys next time when Ari finally gets that hospital visit that she so, so dearly deserves.